Uh, my name is Aris Rosakis and I am a professor at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena. I am also a young visiting uh, professor uh, here at uh, the unit and it is my great pleasure uh, today uh, to join the activities for celebrating the creation of the newest uh, institute at uh, NTU, uh, the Nanyang Institute of Science and Technology for Humanity, NIST. Uh, it has been a very exciting set, set of days, and it's going to be uh, very memorable. And uh, today I have the great pleasure of uh, uh, introducing the next speaker in the NIST launch lecture series, Dr. Florian Congoli. Uh, let me say a few words about uh, uh, Dr. Congoli. Uh, Florian is CEO of Plogen Technologies, uh, a company incorporated both in the US and in Canada. Uh, and he is also the chairman of Plogen Star Outreach. His uh, company, Plogen Technologies, is a high tech company specializing in process control optimization and automation, as well as the development of new and sustainable technologies pertaining to the metallurgical, chemical, and environmental industries for both ferrous and non-ferrous material extraction and processing. Dr. Congoli has uh, over 20 years of uh, rich scientific and technological experience through numerous engagements around the world, and he has also worked with more than 60 chemical and metallurgical companies and collaborated with numerous very well-known universities. Um, Dr. Congoli has published uh, 40 books and approximately 120 scientific articles in the last five years and has delivered over 200 plenary keynote and invited technical presentations all over the globe. He is an elected member of the Euro-Mediterranean Academy of Arts and Sciences and a member of the Industrial Achievement Award Committee of the International Federation of Automatic Control. He is also a member of the editorial board of uh, several international journals. Since 2003, Dr. Congoli has been the president of uh, the organizing committee of the Sustainable Industrial Processing Summits which are held every year in several countries around the world. Uh, in August uh, 2017, he was awarded the Environmental Tech CEO Award for that year by the CEO Monthly Magazine in the United Kingdom. Uh, Dr. Congoli's uh, talk today is sustainability framework and important factor for science and technology development at the service of humanity. Please join me uh, in welcoming Dr. Congoli to NDU with a warm... Thank you. Thank you, it's a pleasure being here. Do you hear me? Do I need to use a microphone? Okay. So it's a pleasure being here. It's the first time in Singapore and I'm starting at uh, your university. And uh, it has been very interesting three days and launching this new institute, which is uh, something that is very promising. It fills a gap that is missing in the, in the global picture of science, technology, and humanity. Uh, what I'm going to speak today is about sustainability framework. We have developed this uh, in the recent years, and then how this applies to uh, science and technology as it develops for humanity. I'm just changing the slides. So sustainability framework as an important factor for science, technology, for science and technology development at the service of the society or at the service of humanity. This is the challenge, how the technology, science and technology can be developed, can be orientated in a certain way 
to serve the humanity and the society. Now, I'm start uh, a little bit uh, differently. So, uh, you see the, uh, the, here we are today. We have a drone and the nature. And how to make them compatible. So there is a, you know, kind of competition. And then to follow that, I'm, I'm showing you two videos, you know, bo both related to drones, before going. The first video is about one particular useful use of drones. Drones is part of... Drone is part of, among others, AI. So in about two minutes, we are saving a human life. Hi, I'm Alec Momo. I'm a graduate student at the TNL, working on a project for a living tomorrow and in the Ken. Our vision is to improve current emergency infrastructure with a network of drones capable of saving lives. At over 100 kilometers per hour, these drones create an ultra-fast response system capable of increasing this survival chance from 8% to 80%. This is because the ambulance drone is not affected by current road infrastructure, but is capable of flying in a straight line, bringing down the average response time of an ambulance from 10 minutes to 1. We developed a new type of drone that is capable of folding into a very compact position. The drone essentially becomes a flying toolbox for your emergency supplies. Using advanced production techniques, such as 3D printed microstructures and carbon fiber frame construction, we were able to achieve a very lightweight design. Our iterative process using design sketching, laser cutting and CNC milling allowed us to rapidly visualize our ideas. The result is an integrated solution that is clear in its orientation and friendly in appearance. Let's use drones for a good purpose. Let us use drones to save lives. That cannot be a better example of using AI and automation in, to help humanity, to help human to save lives, correct? This is a different picture. There is a bit of rough language, but this is how it is, you know. So don't get be a little bit. So, this is the a new technology, can be used very well, it is in, for saving human lives, but as any technology can be misused by any group of people. This is where we stand. And this is one of the purposes of the new institute. How to orient the technology, how to create some boundaries in, or in order to, to be always in the, in the correct path. 
Now, and this path falls under sustainable development, and this is very important. Sustainable development is an, uh, an old uh, concept. In order to, to be, but um, you have to pay attention to the criteria because there is a lot of confusion in literature and in TV and in, in political forums. It's very simple. There are three criteria to be fulfilled. Environmental protection, economic development, and social development. Now, your institute falls to all of them, but mainly in the third point. So, the focus of the institute uh, is social development and how this technology, new, our new technologies can help us in environmental protection, help us in to have economic growth and also to, to protect human life and humanity. So if they are not fulfilled simultaneously, we are not sustainable. Now, as I said, there is huge confusion in literature. Criteria, the actors, the goals have been mixed without any clear distinction. And you hear it all the time, not only in TV, but also in specialized conferences. Illogical inclusions of culture, politics, governance, institutions in the criteria of definition. Culture actually is part of social development. It cannot be a separate criteria because it's social development. Politics, government, institutions are not criteria to achieve sustainability. Are actors or because with their action, laws, regulations can achieve or undermine sustainable development. They're not criteria. You cannot put them as criteria, not like we, we, you see in many definitions. Even in the, in the material of the Montreal, Montreal definition for humanity of uh, artificial intelligence, if you go, it was distributed without all materials. If you go to the, to the end, you have three definition, uh, three uh, glossary on sustainable. One it is strong sustainability, one it is weak sustainability, and one it is sustainable development. It is unusual. It, we have one. Either you are sustainable or either you are not. You cannot have all strong, weak, or, but this is just a small um, addition that I found. Now, as I said, actors can achieve or undermine sustainable development. What are the actors? It's science, first of all, the science, technology, and industrial practice. Second is governance, executive, legislative, and juridical. Without this, they are very important to achieve the sustainable development. And education and civil society. These are the three major you know, actors. We call it also pillars of sustainability. They are pillars if the goals of sustainability I mentioned previously are simultaneously fulfilled. And this is what uh, we clarified and we um, developed the sustainability framework. And it's very easy. Uh, there, is a, there is not a pointer here. Huh? So what it is? To be sustainable, we have to fulfill first to have economic growth. If we don't have economic growth, you can protect the environment all the time. Nothing happens. If you, at the same time, we have to have social advancement. Technology, um, any development have to fulfill that specific criteria. And to, at the same time, protect the environment. If we fulfill all of them, then we are sustainable. But these are just criteria. Now, the pillars I mentioned is science, technology, governance, and education. These are not criteria. It cannot be criteria, as you see in many definitions. Even in, in, in major society, the United States, they started to put government as a criteria of sustainability. It's wrong. Government is not a criteria. It is an actor. It's a pillar. It can help or it can damage the sustainability. So these are, according to us, the three pillars. And if we have a, we ha we have a table with three, with three legs, so any one of those goes off, the whole thing goes down. So there are 
three equally important pillars of sustainability. Um, now, the first pillar, science and technology, we are at the right place. As I said, the three pillars are equally important, but there is an order of priority. If we don't have solution in technology, politicians can stay every 24 hours a day in parliament to solve environmental problems. They will not be able to. Sure, major problems, not simple ones. So first of all, we have to have technological solutions. Then the parliament can choose which one is the best, which one is economic, uh, economically viable, etc., etc., etc. So this is why science and technology is the first one among the pillars of sustainability. Actually, the technology has the first and last word. Why? I'm going to say a little bit later. This is a book just recently published. Uh, and in New York Times, there were three full pages about the book. We are doomed, now what? 2018, it's just published. So, according to the book, the only truly moral response to global climate change is to commit suicide. I'm not joking. It's the book. There is simply no effective way to shrink your carbon footprint. Once you're dead, you won't use any more electricity, you won't eat, you won't eat any more meat, you're not born any more gasoline, so, and you certainly won't have any more children. So, the planet is safe. <laughs> so, if you want to save the planet, you should die. This is 2018, and three pages, and the, and the guy was saying, uh, I don't, uh, he, he just was, he just became a father, the author. And he said, I am very pessimistic because I'm thinking that my daughter will die in the future. One of the paragraphs of the book. But this is not new. Go back in the history. In 1798, Malthus, He used mathematical exponential growth models and concluded population would increase exponentially while food production would only grow arithmetically and famine and starvation unless birth were controlled. And he was not wrong. Since 1955, the population has increased at a rate more than twice what his model predicted. So, his science, his exponential growth model, was a grand disruptor at the time, and it was not wrong. But the solution proposed is far away from science. He, he used science to, to, to get to the conclusions, of, to, but the, pro, the proposed solutions are far away from science. So, he said, we have to reduce population. How? Raise the death rate using hunger, disease, and war. Preventive checks. Lower the birth rate by using abortion, birth control, prostitution, postponement of marriage, and celibacy. So, he was a scientist when he made, uh, achieved, uh, came to the conclusions. But the solution is far, far away from science. And then, this is a book, best-selling book, published in the United States in 1976. America decision. Why? Because it will be impossible, according to the book and mathematical models, to feed the entire global population in the short-term future. So people will not have enough food by 1975. The book was published in 1967. So the mathematical model used was not wrong. The world population increased by more than 2 billion in the 25 years since the last, since the last half of the 20th, 20th century. So the model was not wrong. 
and the book was a disruptor for the knowledge of the time and for the existence of the world at the time. However, the proposal again was far from science, nothing to do with science. He was proposing a triage system, finding out who are the worst countries that we have to help and what are the countries worthless we, let, we have to leave them to die. And one of them was India, Egypt, etc., etc., he was saying in the book. So, and the list continues. The population bomb, United States best selling in 1968. Again, a, a mathematical model was used, and the conclusion was that the population of the world since 1930 had doubled from about 2 billion to nearly 4 billion within a single generation. And as I said, the mathematical models were not bad. Roughly, it cannot be exactly precise, but roughly were the same. Now, uh, the world population increased by more than 2 billion in the last 25 years since the last half of the 20th century. Still, it was a bestseller. It, it raises well, huge interest in the population, etc. But the solution again was the same. He endorsed the previous book. We have to select the countries who are worth to live and who are, which one of them are worth to die. And the still, uh, the list continues. The limit of growth. This is the Club of Rome, 1972. We should have a limit in the growth. Why? Because the computer models uh, said that uh, population, food necessity, industrialization, pollution, consumption of non-renewable natural resources continue to grow exponentially. And the ability of technology to increase resources grew only linearly. It's a big difference. So, they predicted there will be no more resources and there will be an economic collapse by the end of 20th century or in the middle of 21, 21st century. <laughs> so, the, well, the scientific conclusion was not wrong and it was disruptive at the same time, but again, the solution was far from science. Let's stop the growth. Now, a little bit more recently, this is the Global 2000, the report to the President. It was authored uh, and endorsed by Jimmy Carter in 1980, the President of the United States. He has his, the foreword of the book is by the President. Computer model to analyze the global resource consumption and production. Conclusion, the world in 2000 will be more crowded, Will, have, will be more vulnerable to the, any kind of disruption, serious stresses involving population, resources, environment, environment are clearly visible ahead. Despite greater material output, the world people will be poorer in many ways than they are today. Just pay a little bit of attention to this because I'm going to return a little bit later here. Despite greater material output, the world's people will be poorer in many ways than they are today. And this is in 1980. And does not refute or contradict the conclusion of limit of growth report of, of Club of Rome that I mentioned previously. So basically, the solutions are in the same area. But this was a grand disruptor for the time. Based on this, many other public policy were invented and we were put in place. So, the model conclusions on population growth are more or less correct. Okay, they're not wrong. The population has grown considerably, especially starting from the second half of 20th century. And you can see here, there is no pointer here. Huh? There is no. You can see here, from 1800, it was 1 billion, the world population. From 1950s, we're increasing from 2 billion to almost 600, to 6.5 billion. And we'll continue. So the predictions were not wrong. All of them were good, based on science. The problem is that solutions were not sought at the scientific level. 
These are all, these are here you have the references of the articles we published about this. So why it doesn't happen? Today we are the same thing. You hear always in TV, always in conference, by 2050, the population will be 9 billion people, will not have food enough, will not have water enough. This is, in every day you hear this. We are at the same situation we were years ago. Same thing, same risk is, is being set to, to people, etc., etc. The question is, why the predictions of all these previous books didn't happen? What's the reason? Why? Because of science and technology. Why? They used to say we'll not have enough food. We have to let, to let some countries die. Well, the Green Revolution, by the way, is, is by chance. It's not because it's green with the meaning of today. But the Green Revolution today, at that time, led by Norman Burlach, were a series of research, development, and technology transfer initiatives that increased agriculture production worldwide, particularly in the developing world. All these new technologies actually made possible that all those dummy predictions from the previous book didn't happen. All new technologies in agriculture. And in 1968, the Indian professor um, caused the country wheat to harvest, uh, sorry, increase the country's wheat from 12 to 17 million tons, basically save the country. India was supposed to be one of those countries that we have to let to die. So, and in 1970, Norman Burlach, the father of Green uh, Revolution, whose work the professor from India adopted, uh, won Nobel Prize. So it was the science and technology that quietly saved the world. Not the scientists didn't read the books. Who are going to say, etc. But it's good also because it's an incentive. Now this is how it looks the picture. Today we are saying the resources are going down. We don't have enough to feed the population, etc., etc. What are the facts from the United Nations? The world population. Um, the world population from 1961 to 2016 has increased by 139%. The food total per year has increased by 400%. This is United Nations data. Well, but then the question asks, okay, we are able to feed the population. What about the quality? Look at the same. Life expectancy has increased in percentage. So not only we're able to feed the population by double the amount, but also the quality. Because if we increase the life expectancy, the quality of life increases also. So all, the doom, all the, those predictions didn't happen. Why? Because of the science and technology. We are in the same situation today. We're saying we'll not have, we'll not have enough food in the future. Sure, the conclusions are right, are not wrong. None is wrong when they find the conclusion. The problem is, when they find the solution, they find solution outside science. And there, where everybody fails. Because it comes from politics. This is the, these are United Nations data. You can go and find in the internet. And this is in terms of graphs. This is the uh, population, total population, is this curve here. And this is the all, you have to check it, but these are all production. So you see that this is the population developed by regions, poor region, et cetera, et cetera. You see that food production has increased much more than the increase of population. So they are in the same situation today. This is United Nations data, not my data. You go in the internet, are freely available. People do not read and do not an analyze those data. They are there. What about life expectancy? It's good. We have enough food for population to increase the population, etc. But also, life expectancy is very important. And you can see here, 
the world life expectancy is here. More developer regions are here, less developer regions are here, and more developer regions are here. So even in less developed regions, the life expectancy grow, grew completely differently from what was predicted. So what do, what, what do I, why I say they are solution providers? Because it's the science giving a solution. Now, now the, the right place. Automation, artificial intelligence. Huge. In the press, in the TV, great fears. We're going to lose jobs. We're going to lose people who will stay without jobs. Well, let's see really the, the, what is going on. Now, look at the picture. New York Times article in 2013. How technology wrecks middle class. Authors are against the technology. They are saying, computerization has fostered a polarization of employment with job growth concentrated in both the highest and lowest paid occupation, while jobs in the middle have declined. We've heard this also somewhere today. This. But the authors are non-pure exact science. and I have nothing against them. But he's an economist and uh, both two economics professors. The issue is they don't, co they don't collaborate, we co collaborate with people from exact science. The picture, in another article, you see the author there, are we in danger of losing the race against machine? Okay? Are we becoming enslaved to our robot overlords? Do smart machines threaten us with long-term misery? By the way, it's my friend. He has been a, he has been a um, um, personal secretary, advisor in, in environmental issues to, to say, Secretary General of the United Nations. Have we reached the end of labor? Well, this is a book that, we, uh, that I published in uh, 2012. I had, in 2012, I had a completely different view. Automation, which is AI also, is closely related to the modern need of sustainable development in the 21st century. Has the goal to do more with less, which is one of the principles of sustainability. Replaces the routine part of human labor with use of machines, increases productivity and quality of the products. This is my, uh, my, my uh, uh, foreword to the book. Free space, time, energy for humans to deal with new, no routine challenge of developing in innovative technologies. Creates a magnificent cycle. The established development are automated and the free resources achieved are used to develop newer technologies that are subsequently automatic, automated. It is one of the most successful recipes for the human race toward the goal of sustainable development. This was my foreword for the, in the book. You can find the book. It's, it's uh, free access in the internet. You don't need to pay. Now, why it is sustainable? Okay. There are three, three criteria I mentioned in the beginning. In the, in, in, what about the first, let's go the environmental criteria. It controls and prevents emissions of many greenhouse gases and water, pollu uh, water pollution, our pollu pollutants. So this is what we need, correct? If, uh, if AE can achieve this, very good. Saves overall energy and reduces cost in short and long term. This is what we need in, in environmental issues. But this is one of the criteria. I said there are three criteria to be sustainable. Second one is Economy, without growth, we are nowhere. Stimulate economic growth, create and maximize the add-on value, increase productivity, efficiency, and quality of products beyond what would, could have been achieved by humans. Saves time, effort, financial resources in overall cycle and in the big picture. Promotes creation of new jobs in new sectors, 
assuring an overall society-wide positive outcome for job creation. Although in specific se local sectors of routine work, the job numbers are decreased. So sure, automation will lead to decrease of jobs in that s those sectors that jobs can be automated in the routine work, but it saves energy and creates new jobs and frees energy to create to, to, for jobs not to be any more routine, but to be directly to the, to, to the innovation. So it creates more jobs in the non-routine sector. But there is a third criteria, it's a social dimension. That's why the new institute here, how it interacts with the society. Actually, it increases the living standards of humans, since by replacing routine and time-consuming duties, it frees space for more quality of life. So, for example, I, here I'm representing two companies, Logan Technologies Inc. and Logan Star Outreach. Our company does exactly that with new way of control systems. They are very unique that we have developed, not the old ones. Basically, uh, the engineers uh, used to stay all night, if they have a problem, used to stay all night in the meeting, they don't go home, they have no family life, etc., etc., because they have to solve the problem. It's a huge reactor. The blast furnace is a huge reactor. If you have a problem, you have to solve it. You cannot stop. If you stop, you lose productivity for three months. It's impossible to stop. It has to continue. But with our software, they run in the software, they find a solution. They go home, we stay with family. So automation increases the, 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 the quality of, of life. This is one example. Huh? There are many others. Change the human culture in a positive way by urging continuous education for a new, non-routine and more innovative job. Jobs instead of routine and time-consuming jobs. You know? By the way, they are saying, even in uh, Char Charlie Chaplin's movies, you've seen those, uh, those operators that, that become uh, so automatic by putting, uh, and then even when they go home, they continue or walk in the street, they continue the same way. And there is also a study that routine job, it, it, it makes their life miserable, and even it's a cause of cancer. Because you, do, you don't think, you just do a routine job. Not here. If you eliminate the routine job. For example, when the first time GPS system in the cars was invented, oh, I was hearing all the time, we do not need this, this is too much. We are automatic here, we don't need a GPS. Tell me somebody, is anybody here that don't, don't use GPS? Why? Because automation. You don't need anymore to, to see where you are going and to think. You think other things. You know, it, it, it makes life really easy and the quality increases. Helps in profit distribution proportional to innovative jobs creation. So this is also very important. So the other three criteria are fulfilled. So automation, it is really a sustainable activity and it's good. Now, can it be abused? Can it be abused? Sure can it be abused. You saw one of the examples in the beginning I mentioned with, uh, I showed the two videos with, uh, with, uh, with the drones. Now, sure, automation AI will decrease some jobs in the, actually, it's a cycle. Every time we have a new automation thing, we'll lose the routine jobs related to that. But, here we are at the role of a government financially fund development of new automation technologies and in particular those related to recycling in order to save human resources that are otherwise spent in routine work and also set up a legal and policy framework that offers financial assistance for continuing education of people passing from routine, manual and obsolete work to new sustainable advanced profession. This is the solution for the short term. This is why we have the government. If the government doesn't do this, that's against the developer and make aware the population of the need of life long education and the normality of adapting and passing from professions from old professions to new sustainable ones so people that you work in university they always deal with new things the routine job is almost very little bit 10% max 
while the other population mostly deals with the routine job. So why we can not transport this not, not, not routine, innovative job from university, the same type of thinking in the same society, it's the same thing. And automation forces it. And the government can, can play a big role in order to switch, to make population more inventive. And set up framework to avoid abuse of the automation. In anything in the world, there is an abuse. You mention, you name it. There is an abuse in everything. But regulation and education makes it better. So because we have an abuse, for example, you saw the abuse of the, with the drone. Now the conclusion would be, OK, let's ban the drones. We don't need the drones anymore. It's not a solution. For example, a, a religious uh, person, when the iPhone was invented, uh, he came publicly and asked all people that were attending the church, banning iPhones. We do not need iPhones. No, no iPhones because people spend a lot of time on iPhones and they, they become depressed, etc., etc. These are true. They're not bad. If you stay 24 hours a day on iPhone, it's, it's, that's fine. It, sure, you'll be depressed, etc. It's a bad effect. But you cannot say to ban the iPhones because of this bad effect. There are solutions in governments, in education, etc., etc. So, Everything can be abused, but there, the solution stands with science and technology. You cannot, for example, it's like, uh, you know, there are many cases like I can mention here. L recycling or landfilling, for example, huge debate. Which one is sustainable? Uh, I say it depends. Depends what? Why? So, politically correct is to say recycling is always sustainable. Well, not necessarily, and then I'm going to explain why. And here the science has decisive, uh, decisive role. Here we modify the central paradigm of material science engineering uh, as it was before. Before it was processing, this is another article we published. The paradigm was we process, we have a structure. Because of the structure, we have properties. And from because of properties, we have performance. And you have this in all materials, wood, metal, everywhere. But something was missing here, and this is 1997. The missing link was this, processing, structure, property, performance, reutilization or recyclability. So this was missing, and this makes this sustainable. Why? So, from the first moment in the lab, when we invent something, until now, we were thinking up to here. But now we have to have a new dimension. From the design process, from the alpha. Okay, I'm going to achieve this performance, but at the end of the life, can I recycle it? If we achieve that, then we are sustainable. And this is ours, so we published this in 2012. This is, we call it, modified uh, central paradigm of material science and engineering. But this is uh, linear. You see, you see linear. Linear. Uh, also in 2001, uh, this is how he represent the material science and engineering. Cause and effect goes this way. Goals and mean goes this way. It's the same thing, basically, but this is... A, in a circular way. Processing, structure, properties, performance. Missing the link of recyclability. So cause and effect goes this way, goals and mean goes this way. Now, what is missing is uh, recyclability, and this makes completely circular. So processing, structure, properties, performance, re reuse, recycle. And then you go again here, because this, this is used as a new input. And this is fully, uh, fully um, um, closed cycle. Now, uh, what is the problem here, before going here? There are many recycling companies that have gone bankrupt in the United States, in Canada, in Europe. They, they started 
with good things, and et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, they became non-profitable. Now, the question is, recyclability, recyclability is good. It's not bad. The issue is why they, or they need a lot of funding from the government because they are not, they cannot be profitable, or they, 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 they've gone bankrupt. Why? Because the technology used does, is not sustainable. Why? Because it doesn't fulfill the economic criteria of sustainability. In any technology, you have to fulfill three criteria. First of all, if you are an economically viable, you're going to go bankrupt. You serve not to sustainability. Economy, this, each technology has to have to keep this in mind. Has to be feasible, to be economical, economically viable. Second, has to protect the environment. Third, to be, to improve the human life. So, in this, if we don't have a technology that then can recycle in an economical, feasible way, some of the waste, better landfill it, temporary. So it depends. If the technology is, is, uh, is sustainable, you can recycle it. And this is the ideal case. But if there is no technology, then, then better you waste it until you, you, you landfill it as a waste. And until a new technology comes forward, doesn't mean that recyclability is bad, is the ideal, is the goal, but has to be in a, reached in a sustainable way, has to be economic, economically feasible, has to make money first. Because why we are making money? Because there are the salary, human lives involved. So these employees need the salary to to live in a in a in life, to to live a quality life. So here the role of government in recycling. Financially fund to develop new economic and feasible recycling technologies. Set up a legal framework for efficient waste collection if we don't have recycled. Helping recycle, get recycled materials to consumers, etc., etc. There are many things that the government can do. And make aware the population for the need of importance of sustainable technologies and good recycling pr practices. This is our government role. Increase awareness of the important role that scientists and engineers can play in the society by providing more incentives to students and gain science engineering university education. Because not too many people are going to science engineering today in the world. Probably Singapore is different, but in many countries, number of engineers and scientists are going down considerably. This is the, all this, now I touched, touched a little, this is more, much more than that, but I touched a little bit the criteria and, uh, and uh, the pillars. So then I, I return a little bit here to grand, grand disruptor and solution provider, which is science and technology. Just as a few examples. So I, I like this expression, I've used it all the time. It's science is the border and boundary disruptor. Border is, the one case is Singapore. You don't have any border, a scientist from all over the world coming here. So one, once the CEO of uh, Daimler-Benz said that the real com com competitors of uh, Mercedes-Benz are Tesla, Google, Apple, and Amazon, because this is disrupting Uber is a software tool. They don't own any car, but apparently they are the biggest taxi company in the world. It's just a software company, no ownership. Airbnb is a software tool, the biggest hotel chain without any hotel property. Now, there are problems here, many. Now, there is many, many um, uh, you know, complaints about public because they uh, in many countries, they are saying, okay, people are not renting any more apartments, but they are, they are selling in Airbnb. They are normal situation. That's fine. But again, every, <laughs> every new development has a disadvantage. And this new disadvantage has to be repaired. It's a cycle. So there are problems here. There are problems here. It's not a black and white situation, but uh, I mean, it's not a golden situation. There are black spots also, but this is science. We're going to still uh, 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 fix these issues. Software will diagnose cancer better than human. Might be other problems there. Might be ethic problems, but these can be fixed. 
um, software will recognize be faces better than humans. So we see that today in iPhone and other, and, uh, and other mobile phones. And they say software will be more intelligent than humans, but this I'm not so sure. Because at the end of the day, AI, it is programmed. The intelligence rests with humans. Any robot will not really be able to invent new things. Because humans have to input the algorithm to invent new things. The robot cannot do it by itself to invent new things. A robot at the end of the day will be maximum to, 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 to automate the, the routine work, to do everything. But very hard to make it, to put the robots, to have robots your students. And to tell them, okay, invent new technology. They cannot do it. No, it, it's because they have to be programmed. And if the humans do not know the solution, they cannot program the robots. So it is not, sometimes the fear is overblown. Software will drive cars better than humans. Own a car or parking a car might not be necessary anymore. A driver's license might not be necessary anymore. No car accidents anymore. So now, what happened, I don't know, probably in California, I don't remember where it was, when the Google cars were driving without drivers, the, some taxi driver f perceived them as competitors and were trying to, to, to punch their tires. <laughs> this happens because they, they are afraid they are losing their job. But the job is not just driving a car, there are other jobs. It's always innovating, finding new jobs, like we do in university. It's a big difference type of work in university and, and in the society. The society is more routine job. University is always innovation, innovation. This has to be transferred to the society through the government incentives, etc., etc. No insurance companies anymore, OK? But they will be against this. They'll say, you oh, are losing your job. But there are other things they can do. Software will scan retina, give blood analysis when you breathe in a device, etc., etc. We are almost there, we're not far away. So the border between United States and Canada is with scan, with a, with a eye scanning. You don't need any more passport, you don't need any more documents. Just, uh, you, I normally do that because I travel frequently. I go to the machine, I, I, I scan my eyes, it gives me, uh, and I go without even speaking to a border agent. I do not see a border agent. Nobody asks me, what do you have in the bag? Do you have this, do you have that? I go past this and go this way without seeing anyone. Now, the border agent may be against this. They were against it at the beginning. But there are other jobs they can do. More innov innovative jobs, you know. Much cleaner water wanted from seawater. This is Singapore is also good. To, to about 20% of the water from Singapore coming from the seawater. Software will identify any disease, etc., etc. So basically, I'm. <laughs> I'm at the end. Um, all this that I mentioned here are actually a major goal of our, uh, the chairman mentioned, of our Sustainable Industrial Processing Summit. All these are basically our foundation for this summit that we do annually. And then uh, uh, to, find, to, to complete this presentation, uh, I wanted to show some... Uh, uh, this is one of the... My team has prepared is a, is a you know, promotion of our next conference. It will be held in, uh, in Cyprus in October this year. And um, you see this is New York here. You're going to ask what's the relation between New York and Cyprus. But uh, you'll see. And, uh, oh, we passed. First of all, you have to. Oh, it's not running. I try, I, I already... I tested this. Anyway, I can go to the... Maybe you have to go to the slide. Yeah, go. With your cursor. Yeah, I tried that. In the bottom, yeah, there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah.
Okay, here. We have to restart it. I mean, no, not to restart the computer, to, to redo it. Just uh, probably should do this way. We're going to go to the origin, to run it from here. And the title is Sips, the Modern Prometheus. So that's it. You are modern Prometheus. <laughs> this is the idea. Thank you very much for your fascinating talk. Any, uh, any comments or Question. uh, questions for Dr. Kongori? So uh, maybe I should try to be a little bit confrontational. So does it mean that sure. we just completely ignore climate change and continue with our lifestyle as it is and assume that Technology will solve all the problems and we don't have to worry about our... No, technology is one of the pillars, as I said. There are three pillars. In a, a table with three legs, one of the legs goes, there is no more sustainability. So, sure, we're not going to go as business as usual, but the vision is to fulfill the three of them. Suppose that, for example, you, uh, you have a steel plant and you close it completely and you create... 3,000 jobs, uh, unemployed people. Is this sustainable? It has to be fulfilled at the same time. So climate change is one of the things. Technology will, will uh, technology save the world. It's the history. It's the fact, not, not mine. It will may, it will play the major role coming. Whatever we do, what we are doing right now, climate change and CO2 has been increasing. 
none of the major countries have achieved the goals until now yet. We have a Paris Agreement, but none of the countries that have signed have achieved the goals. Why? Because they are not in the right technologies yet. Well, there are some to capture and, the, and to, to, uh, to, um, to capture CO2, etc., et but they are too expensive. So that's what I'm saying. If it is too expensive, it's not sustainable. So, no, it, there is not actually, I should have mentioned it there. Climate change is a real issue, as I mentioned there. It is a real issue, it has to be solved. The issue is how. Have to be the three government, technology first, in cooperation with government, in cooperation with education. If we don't do these three, we're not going to solve it. But always the technology has been under evaluated. From politicians, have been always under evaluated. So uh, this is the focus of this. It cannot be without technology. We, politicians cannot choose between existing technologies. Which one is good? To choose, what, what, if you have technology, you can choose. If you have none, what you can do? So, if you want to, to produce, to 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 have uh, clean water from the sea. So you 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 have 20 percent. Singapore has 20 percent today, but still is expensive for most of the world. And then we have to develop new technology to make it cheaper, and this this, this is helps. Uh, if we develop new technologies that do not create CO2, we achieve the goals. If we have technologies that capture the CO2 and deposit it in the ground, which is feasible, this, we, we save the world. Sure, we can, we can use all other means. For example, this is a different presentation I have. I'm not going there. For example, okay, uh, don't, there are several theories. Don't eat too much meat, okay? It, it will be good, but this is just a small thing. Don't um, um, use, there are even contradictory theories. So, carpool means to, to uh, you know, to, uh, to reduce the CO2 per person. But then, uh, you know, they are saying, okay, if you use three persons in the car, the weight of the car is bigger. You, you spend more fuel. So this is a science, has to, 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 it's a balance everywhere. If you, if you don't use the scientific means, then we go back in history. Every one of those had their own conclusion because they were based on politics only. They ignored the science. History ignored the science for solutions. History only evaluated the science only for diagnostic. But science is diagnosed and solution provided at the same time. All they were based in science, but even politicians today, they are saying science-based solutions, science-based solution. But why? Only for diagnostic problem. Okay, we, the temperature is rising. That's fine. It's not wrong. What is the solution? Okay, what are you going to do? Without science, you cannot do it. That's the point. Is it different? You see the difference? It's not. I'm not saying that climate change is not a problem. It is. The issue is how to solve it, how to be efficient to solve it. So sure, we can, in the hotels today, we see, okay, don't to wash your set frequently, don't wash your, your towels frequently. Basically, probably you go and, and don't wash yourself for one year. <laughs> okay, it will save something, but this will not save the world. This, this is the point. Has to be cooperation with science. Has to be a solution. Strong. That's why the institute here, that's the role of the institute, I see it. So they have to see how the technologies help the humanity and the cooperation with the government. Otherwise, without technology, I do not see any solution. I'm not saying to have a, um, business as usual, no. The whole purpose of this is not to do business as usual, but to be realistic and to find the most efficient way to achieve the goals of climate change. That is a, a reasonable, reasonable forecast. Okay. How, how do you how do you see it coming? I mean, I mean, in the future, people will still get into accidents or whatever. Maybe AI will replace those agents, but uh, I feel it's still it's still an industry that will still exist. Yeah, because you don't, you will not need any more private cars. 
you, you will need the cars when it is needed and it is, it, uh, they don't have, have even drivers. They're going to send you wherever you want. So uh, probably only the owners of these companies that provide this car, they might have this in case of accident, but not for usual people. Basically, we'll, we might not need any more cars because we'll have cars anytime we want. We call, he comes without driver, sends you where you want. This is, looks like a fiction for the moment, but uh, it's a possibility. That's why I say reasonable. All the predictions based on science were not bad in population. Plus, minus, they were the same. And they, were, they were racist in the solutions found were racist. That is a different story. But, but wouldn't it be the case that uh, even though we make exponential improvements in science and technology, we keep moving from disequilibrium to disequilibrium because we will never be in a static equilibrium. No, matter. it's always because dynamic. Because of that, uh, just like the new, even though aeroplane technology has improved so much, yeah. the new 737s are having a problem at the moment. So, uh, therefore, even with the most advanced uh, auto autonomous yeah. vehicles, there will always be boundary conditions under which... 100% uh, agree. So therefore that's why the government, that's why the education, yeah. that's why the institute here, the boundaries, yeah. how to orient in the, in the, to the... So the to insurance companies will be required at the boundary. Right? Could be, yeah. exactly. This is our... We cannot forecast with precision. We cannot forecast human ingenuity. It's the, the best in the world. It's, we cannot forecast. Again, if you use if you use cup. So it's the plastic cup versus a mug. So okay. the argument is we say if you wash the mugs, you waste more water. So in the end, you waste more resources. So my question. These is, are all know? good things. The issue is how much is the effect of all this? For example, this is the plastic. Um, we have a lot of plastic in the ocean and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. This is a big problem, or not, not a big problem. The issue is why. Because we don't have a good technology to recycle them. And then we wasted them. So, okay, we can replace them with mugs. That's okay, we save a little bit of water. But, um, you know, even mugs, they have to be recycled. It's the end of life of everything, you know. So if, if we, um, we're going to save a little bit of this, we're going to save a little bit of that, but uh, the real solution is, for you here as students to find new technology to, to, to cheap technology to, to, to recycle this, to, to recycle everything. All the restrictions come because we don't have the right technology. If we have the right technology, there is no restriction. So, uh, you know, so we're saying for humanity, but if we say we have to make ourselves life miserable just to save the planet, is this sustainable? <laughs> One person told me when I invited, it's a real story, I'm not mentioning the name, but it's a known person. And he told me, usually these days I don't, uh, I don't travel anymore by airplane because I want to save, to, not to create CO2 pollution. So imagine, okay, because planes create CO2 pollution, wh why not? No planes anymore. <laughs> That's the <a> solution? <laughs> It is, uh, it's, well, what is the solution? To have the planes, but to have them to, let, to spend less CO2, to be lighter and so that. And who's going to do that? You people here. So is, making life miserable is easy. But are we, we are saying here, Institute for Science and Technology for Humanity. What is the planet without humanity? Without people that are having life miserable. So we have to, to concentrate in humanity. Sure, planet is our part of humanity, but um, this is the, the concept, the three, the three legs, the three, the three criteria. So uh, there are many other things. So we can stay here hours and hours and hours, but... Um, so perhaps we can take one, one more question, if there is one. Yes. 
Sure, the anxiety is there. All politicians are speaking about this, but they don't see the things this way. They're saying oh, people are anxiety. Not only that, there, is a, there was a, in the news I saw another report. Teenagers were having depression because they're thinking in 20 years they don't want to have children because they, they know they're going to die because the climate will here. Seriously, I'm not joking. They were saying, we will not have children, I am very anxiety. And the psychologist was interviewed there. Yes, we see a lot of anxiety, we see depression in the young generation because they imagine in 20 years the world will end. This was just two weeks ago. So this, is, this exists and politicians are following because... But the problem is, this is not information, enough information. In the beginning, we might lose more jobs than create, that's sure, but the government can that's the role of a government, to give money to these people that they got unemployed, to probably the same salary, temporarily, until they get education to have a new job in a more innovative way, not a routine job. So the government, this is the role of the government. That's why three pillars, technology, government, and education. So if one of the three pillars go, everything you saw is a table with three. Either one goes. So we, that's the... That's the point. In the beginning, we might probably, we don't know, we have to do the numbers. But probably in the beginning, we might lose more job. It depends. This has been going on forever. It's not just now. This has been on in the, in the first industrial revolution. We had exactly the same thing. We didn't stop the industrial revolution. It is the same as a cycle that goes away, goes away, goes away. That's, uh, you know, in the beginning, yeah, there is a possibility to lose more job. More number, number of jobs lost are more than those created. But there's the government, unless the government does nothing. This is the role of the government. Minimum they, or maximum they can give 100% salary for six months until they get a new jobs. Uh, I mean, new type of jobs, etc., etc. Like here, you're in university. Are you, do you spend your day or your year just in one field? You don't try to do something new as... This is how the society has to be. Not just going like, uh, you know, Charlie Chaplin. It's the same thing. So in this sense, I guess, technology is, of course, going to help us in a big way. But at the same time, I guess we should not stop making our efforts to save should the Should not stop, sorry? What? Our efforts to save the planet. For example, no. I never said that. No. Yeah. To do it this way. So that is really important. Sure. The three at the same time. I never said that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have to, to work in the three direction. Tech, science, technology, governance, which put frameworks in with the carbon tax, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, plus the education. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think probably the message would have got a little bit... I agree with you. So long run, technology will solve the issue. Yes. But short run, sort of taking Government. less number of... I'm not saying we don't fly entirely. Yeah. Taking less number of trips using less plastic bottles. Uh, it, it, That's correct. An analogy. It's like That's correct. you're working in a startup environment. That's correct. I, I'm confident that I'm going to be Bill Gates uh, 20 years yeah. from now. I'll have millions of dollars. Yeah. That doesn't mean that I count my uh, golden eggs now and start spending big time. No, no. Right now, I have limited money. I'm in a startup. The, I'm in a garage. The three criteria. Yeah. If, so, you, if you think with the three criteria, we, are, so right we now, agree. Earth is in a garage. We, we are looking for technology in the future. So right now, we should still spend less on plastic. That's correct. Less on... Uh, That's correct. Okay. That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. That's why the three pillars. But if we don't do the technology in the own long run, we are dead. Yeah. So, but... The, all, I, I think the audience will totally agree with you that all these things like reducing consumption is eventually peanuts if the technology can go. But at the moment, it's still important. Exactly. That's true. We agree. So these are the three pillars. And yeah. It's a balance. It's everything is a balance with these three. 
three criteria. Yeah, and, but who is going to do this? It's you, you're going to do. You're scientist. The government depends on you, on us, not vice versa. <laughs> I also wanted to add it here in relation to your three pillars. Yeah. That's another thing that uh, should be realized that uh, uh, we also need investment in science and then transition from pure science to technology in order exactly. to achieve this. Exactly. So one of the pillars, which is government, should be actually helping the other pillars. That's which is I mentioned it, I should have stressed it more. Uh, this is a very good point. In order to be able to reach that point, and this is related to both of your points here, that uh, in order to evolve and have better first science, then technology, and ability to respond to environmental challenges, uh, we need investment. Exactly. So it comes from your own taxes to government. Exactly. This is also in the article, but this is, yeah. it's very good you, you stress this because I passed it a little bit fast. But this is a very important point. The whole thing is at the end, in some other presentation I say, money should flow at the university, technology companies. I say this before the politicians. I say this all the time. But it's very good. Thank you because you stressed no, it. Uh, because no, here. This, is, this, is the, this is the main point. Money should flow here to, to accelerate this solution you know unfortunately money more goes to not they are bad but if you see uh, we don't have time to continue all this but there are reports from united nations bodies in paris in london in there they deal basically with the thick reports like this they basically deal every year almost the same thing so huge money goes there compared to science and technology so this is an imbalance you know it's an imbalance. Much more, more, more going, going to do these reports, reading the reports, and the reports that are repetitive every time, thick. From one London to Paris, you get the report almost the same. And um, not too much money in globals go to science and technology. That's the entire point. And to make them applicable, because you can do fundamental science all life, and if you don't apply it, it's not sustainable. Any other comments? Sure, welcome. It's like total oversimplification of like, <laughs> of, of like reality. For a start, take NGO as a phenomenal kind of like, you know, example to prove my point. Uh, we have the, uh, we have an NGO, like NGO is actually, we have an eco campus kind of initiative, which is actually a test phase for like, you know, to roll it out to Singapore. And we have actually a target that is supposed to be reached by next year to a reduction in, in energy consumption, water consumption, and waste consumption by 20%. Okay. Now, interestingly enough, your technology has achieved the water and the, and the electricity. It has not achieved the waste. Because the waste is exactly what you said. How do we get people to buy into it? And yeah. they don't, frankly speaking, care. Yeah, I know. Because they sit around and say, well, it's the government's job. Oh, it's technology's job. No, it's not. Yeah, and this the technology has in the course of life done. Let me give you an example from Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, your green ever revolution has probably done more damage than you. Yes, if we measure the grain production in Bangladesh case rise, yes, it definitely has gone up. But at the same time, when people that are now 40, their children, they could catch fish in the rivers by hand because there were so many fish in Bangladesh and it's the staple of like every village. They didn't have to spend money for that. They just went and caught it. Which the green revolution and the wash up of all the pesticides and the kind of fertilizers, the fish stocks have gone down. Then now the entire country depends on fish farms, which we all know are not. Okay, I got the idea. So basically, we put the technology. Yes, they are like you know sticky tapes over kind of. Mm, I have a, I have the reply for that. Map, but is it really a long time solution? I it is. Really yeah, I I can I can argument that. So this, the problem is uh, productivity and pesticides, correct? No, I'm, I'm talking about the whole point. I'm not talking about one example. I'm talking about the fact that in that whole system, we haven't even looked at the impact system? of the natural resources. Which system? 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 Which
And um, we all know that, so, I mean, recycling is not working, and landfills are definitely not working. Both are not working. Well, because, technology is, really because I mean, technology is missing. Because technology is missing. No, there is no problem of, of anyway, one by one. Yes, that's the education pillar that I mentioned. The education pillar. There are three pillars: technology, government, and education. One. Well, one thing, and then it comes, then it comes to the government with uh, with the regulations and laws. So education is both. Humans are not always rational. We were like it that way even they were simple, yes. but we are emotional creatures. We make stupid decisions. Well, but this is fact of life. So this is uh, where I have to. F well, but but the one important point she mentioned that I want to to to, to say a few things. Yes, the green, you increase productivity because of the fertilizer, etc., etc. Now, we achieved this goal. Now we have studies saying, okay, fertilizers are bad for humans. Actually, the history doesn't, the facts do not show that. Because we have increased productivity, we have increased the human life expectancy at the same time. If the pesticide would have been so bad, the life expectancy would not have increased. But... I'm not saying that pesticides are good. Pesticides are bad. And this is a conclusion now. We have achieved the stage. We, we increase the, the population. We increase the food. And now we are saying, oh, we have another potential to increase the human life even more. Now, which one is the oh, factor that decreases the human life is pesticide. Here now we need another research to find the replacement from pesticide. But this science created this problem solved this, this problem, but created as a, as a, as a, created a, you know, as a side effect, the problem of pesticide. Now, this pesticide is a new research to develop new technology, to replace it, to make it even better. There is a cycle of development. What are you going to do? Okay, let's stop pesticides, let, leave it half of the world die. Is this a solution? <laughs> No, I mean, this is the point. Now, for the limited resources, be careful. Okay, we are saying we have limited resources on minerals. All the iPhones, etc., these are, come from mineral, 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 everything. We have, we have a limited resource. Careful. Now it's a big business. Companies are going, taking minerals from meteorites and other planets. If we take minerals from other planets, we don't have any more limited resources. This is a technology going on right now. It's a company has sent uh, Well, this is a question of research development to make it cost lower. That's what I'm saying. The, taking water from, from the sea, the technologies exist. But they are expensive. If there is no... If they are expensive, there is no sustainable, they are lacking the, sustain the economic effect factor. There are three factors. Economy, society, and environment. I think if you put in the time factor, because sometimes inventions need time to prove whether sure. they're right or wrong. But sure. Really good inventions that show initial promise end up being damaging the long sure. term, but you only find out after sure. that. And then new science come in to help it, and I think it's an ongoing science. Exactly, but that's why the three factors. We have to do both. So you have to do the three. Sure. The three of them, no, three. Oh, yes. It's technology, yes. government role, and education. So, I mean, as well as so education, she's saying she didn't have good results with students. She's saying not good results with students, they don't care. I educate them. Okay, but that comes the cycle, then where it comes the government. Creates the laws and penalties. If you don't follow that... Culture, yes, sure. Culture falls to the society. Yes. It's a society.
well, in my lifetime, I, I had this debate with my father when I was a teenager, you know? And, I mean, no, the debate well, was in 1798. <laughs> the debate was in 1798. <laughs> It started in 1798, the debate. Because of the time, I would like to ask you to continue privately the conversation with our speaker. But this is good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.